Have your Bibles turn with me to the book of Exodus, if you would. Exodus, the 33rd chapter. Let's stand as we honor God's word by standing. This is another <clears throat> expository message that I have prepared. You know, some people didn't think I even knew what expository meant, but uh, I do. Uh, Exodus 33. <clears throat> We're going to begin reading in verse 12. This is taken from Moses' prayer. Moses prayed a prayer unto God, and this is taken from his prayer. And Moses said in verse 12, And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people. Great task now. That's a, uh, Before we go any further, I, I just want to tell you that uh, there was almost, uh, some say as many as, between six and 10 million people that the Lord had told him to bring up. <clears throat> That's a lot of people and a great task. Bring up this people. And of course, Moses had to pray about it as all of us should. Every time we know the Lord wants us to do something, we should pray about it. Bring up this people and thou hast not let me know whom thou will send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. <laughs> And thou hast also found grace in my sight. <clears throat> and that's the reason he sent Moses out to do it. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, and I may know thee. I may find grace in thy sight and consider that his nation is thy people, or this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And, and he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For within shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Is it not in that thou goest with us, so shall we be separated, I, I and thy people, <clears throat> from all the people that are up on the face of the earth. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Thank you, Lord, for the leadership that you give us. Thank you, Lord, for these messages today, Lord. We, uh, we, uh, some way, somehow, you've got, you, you, you gave me a message out of these passages. And Lord, I'm just so thankful that uh, we can begin to understand them after we study them and study them. And, and keep studying them and we begin to understand them as then what the Lord would have uh, us to get out of this. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. <clears throat> Title of this message this afternoon is He is Omnipresent. <clears throat> All of you know what omnipresent means, it means God is present at all times and everywhere. There's not a place that God is not. He's present everywhere. And uh, you can't go to any place that God's not present. You can't walk, you can't walk deep enough in the woods that God is not present. You can't, you can't uh, try to hide from God because he's all present. He's always present. He's here today. He's here, he's here today. He's right here, right here, right now. He, see, he, he chooses to dwell in his house. And this is his house. And he chooses to dwell in his house. He knows your thoughts. He knows every one of your hearts. He knows what you're thinking about right now. And he knows what you'll be thinking about when you leave here. He, he, he knows everything about you. He, he, knows, he, knows, he knows every hair on your head. He knows all of it, even Reggie. He knows where Reggie lost all his hair. So, so he knows everything. <clears throat> he, know, he knows all about us. And so uh, just remember that, that there's nothing that God does not know about us, and there's, there's no time that God is not with us. This is what Moses is getting across here. Lord, if I've, if, and I'm just paraphrasing it, my way, he says, if I'm going to lead all these people up here, Lord, you're going to have to go with me. 
And the Lord told him, said, I wouldn't have asked you to do it if I was not with you. And, and just remember that. Lord's not going to ask you to do anything that he's not going to go with you. And he's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you what you need to do it. And, that, and he's going to be with you all the time. He's going to be with you from the time you're, you, you're born again until the time that you leave this world and settle in heaven. He's going to be with you. And he's going to be there too. He'll be there too. When you get there, he'll be already there. So one thing for sure, he is omnipresent. Now a great promise from a great and faithful prince is a great and precious privilege. You know, when God gives us a promise from a great God, and I'm, I'm use, I use the word prince here because, you know, when, uh, when, um, when, when the president uh, asks you to do something, then uh, it, it is a precious privilege. Well, when God asks you to do something, that is a precious privilege. If God leads you to do something, that's a precious privilege that God will go with you. Let the Lord we serve but speak and it will be fulfilled just as he spoke it. The Bible says he has given us great and precious promises that by these we might be made partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruptions that in the world through lust. You know, let me tell you folks, those folks that have gone on and those that are in heaven today would not come back. There's no way, there is no way. I don't, I don't care how much they loved you before they left here, no way they're gonna come back. And I don't care how much you love them uh, before they left here while they were here on the earth, they're not gonna come back at your beckoning either. They're not gonna come back because he's with them. He led them all the way. The song we sang talks about him leading us all the way. So he, he's led them all the way. The billions and billions of promises man makes are nothing compared to just one promise God makes. You know, men promise everything, but some of them keep their promises, some of them don't. You know, and some of them promise you they're gonna be in church, but they don't show up. You know, men, men have a lot of promises in this world. But uh, one, uh, billions of them are worth nothing when it comes to just one promise that God gives us, and that is, I'll be with you. I'll be with you from the time that you wake up to the time you go back to sleep. But I'll be with you through the night. And, and I'll be, I will be the one that will wake you up in the morning. God will be with you. He says, Jehovah told Moses, he says, my presence shall go with thee and I will give thee rest. I will give thee rest. In the verse 14, Moses, like most of us today, needed more assurance. He needed more assurance, like we do. The Lord gives his children chores to do for his work around his church and among his people. He has promised he will be with them who answer the call. But, but there, there are a very minute few today who take the Lord at his promise. Very, very few, the very few today want to work for the Lord, want to do things for the Lord because it ties them up too much. And, but, but the Lord has promised us that he, he has promised us, he says, I will give thee rest. And he has promised that he will be with them who answers the call. But there, well, I already said this, Moses was confronted with a great task and that was bring up his people. You, you, got, you got to realize when, when God went to Moses and told Moses that I want you to bring up my people, Moses phew, all of a sudden got to thinking, God, they might be as many as 10 million of them. Might be as many as 6 million or 10 million of them, Lord. How am I going to control them? Well, we know what the situation was. If you read further there, you'll find that all oh, God got, Moses said, I'm, I'm not able to do this. And God said, you just tell them that I am sent you and says they'll follow you. And that's the same way it is here, same way it is right here in this pulpit. You know, as, as, long, as, as long as you know that God is leading and directing, 
then then you you'll do the things that that you should be doing. And but the thing about it is, is a lot of people today have got other things to do. They've got it. They've got a, just an abundance of things that they have to do, and and they just can't do it. You know, all they I have to do this. I have to do that. But I tell you, when God calls, you better go, because He doesn't call very often. God God doesn't choose just everybody to do His work. God picks out those, as as Moses, as God told Moses, said said I'm I pick out these. Uh, that uh, that have found grace in in my sight, you know. Do you have you found grace in the sight of the Lord? If you have, then you better get ready, because the Lord's going to uh, uh, Lord's going to ask you about doing something for Him. And you know, if you don't find grace in the eyes of the Lord, He's probably not going to ask you. But He told Moses, He said, the reason I ask you to do this great task is because you found grace in my eyes, in my sight. You found grace. And Moses was telling all the people that he brought up. If you, if you read further there, you'll find all the people that he brought up. Moses said all of them find sight, find, find grace in your sight. Every one of them do. So see, it's possible uh, that everyone finds grace in the eyes of the Lord. So, so whether you're a leader or whether you're a follower, you must find grace. Uh, in the sight of the Lord. The Lord gives his children chores to do. <clears throat> well, I already said that. Let me go down here. Um, what, what a task this was. Could Moses do it on his own power? Absolutely not. He couldn't do it on his own power. It, was, it has been said, it has been said, God's biddings are his enabling. You know, when God bids us do something, he'll enable us to do it. He'll give us what we need to do it. You say, well, I just can't do that. You can if you found sight in the eyes, in the eyes of God. If God calls you, you can do it. You'll say, well, I can't. If God calls you, you can do it. You know, I tell you, it's a, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a big task. When God calls you to do something, you better not turn on God. You better not say, Lord, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. Because he'll know right off there you don't trust him like you should. You don't trust him. Great assurance that we have in everything is, you know, if we, if we sit around and worry about whether we're going to die and go to hell or not, you know, that's because we don't have any assurance. God will give you assurance. You find grace in his sight, God will give you assurance. And we're going to talk more about that in just a moment. How, how can Moses do what he was called to do without the everlasting presence of Jehovah God? God still calls men to bring up his people by calling them into the ministry. How can any minister do what God has called him to do uh, with do with God being except God be with him? He can't. Many, many out there today think they that they can and are trying to do it without the Lord, but they don't succeed. We can talk about God's presence with us, but where is his presence with us when we plan to do something on our own. Where is his presence then? You know, when we, when we plan we're going to do something on our own, where is God's presence? You know, you have to realize God is still present with you. You know, if, if, if you give up, if you give up these things, we can ask, we can ask and receive his power when we are doing the will of God. The great apostle Paul said, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. <clears throat> Why, what did Jehovah God promise Moses? My presence shall go with thee. Let me ask you today, who in this building is able to unpack all the treasures in this casket? Unpack all the treasures in this casket. Remember, those treasures are also in the casket. How many can unpack all those? You can't. You, you, you can't. You might say, well, I can clean this casket out right now. You can't do it <clears throat> because God is with you. God is leading you, directing you. You might say, I'm not going to get in that casket, but you will. You will. 
You'll be in it. What was it? What was it? <coughs> Solomon said. So Solomon said that you put your own clothes on in the morning. And he said somebody else will put them on you at night. You know what he's talking about? I think he's talking about the funeral director. You know, you might put your own on this, this morning, but before this night's over with, they may be somebody else putting them on. Let me tell you, folks, that's the way God is. That's the way God works. That's what he does. Why, what did Jehovah, God promised Moses, my presence shall go with thee. <clears throat> um, who will try to unpack this casket that we're talking about? We all will be in a casket in the ground before we exhaust the contents of, earthly, of the earthly casket God has presented to us. You know, what, what, what is the thing that God has presented to us? God says, you go through the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I'll be with you. You know, when death just becomes a shadow, I don't know how many of you saw on Facebook, Emily, that Rachel found her shadow. And she was walking, and Emily said she was just jabbering to that shadow as she walked. Well, uh, you know, uh, God says death is only a shadow when I'm with you. Just a shadow. It's not, it's not anything else. It's just a shadow. And, uh, but God says, I'll be with you. <clears throat> Let me warn you today, we have already closed the top of, of that casket by grieving the Holy Spirit. You know, we quit trying to empty that casket out when we grieve the Holy Spirit. When we do things we shouldn't be doing, when we do things that's uh, opposite of what God would have us do, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're, they're closing the top on that casket. The top's being closed. And can you imagine People, I've often wondered if the Lord was to come back while church was going on, how many people would not recognize him, would not recognize that it's the Lord coming back. How many people would head under the pews, be scared to death, that what was going to happen? But let me tell you, folks, this is the way it is. Do you realize that when Moses asked for this promise it was given, Moses said, show me thy glory that I may know thee. Show me thy glory that I may know thee. Maybe we need to know him better. <clears throat> Those who seek to his presence receive it. <clears throat> the pure in heart shall see God and know him. They shall know who he is. They shall, they shall see him. They shall know who he is. They shall know, they shall know if he is with them or not. If he is, if he is uh, leading them, guiding them, and directing them. God knows that. He's omnipresent. I'm just telling you folks, he's here today. He's right here right now. And he knows you. How well do you know him? He knows you. How well do you know him? He knows all about you. How well do you know him? You know, Moses said, Lord, show me. Show me more of you. Show me your glory. Show me more of you, Lord. You know, some of us don't sit still long enough for the Lord to show us anything. What was it? What was it? Moses said in another place, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Just stop for a minute. Stop for a minute with your busy life and your running and carrying on and going on. Everything we do and just see the salvation of the Lord. Just see how good the Lord is to his children. Let me, and I'm going to say this a little later. I'll just wait till just a few minutes. Earthly potentates manifest such distinction among men of the world. Thousands go to the Trump rallies, rallies or whatever it is. Thousands go. Millions, thousands, millions have gone to the Trump rallies. What does the presence of God draw today? Well, look around you, not many. Not many. Is, is, is there a church that God is in today? Yeah, he's in all of them. He knows the ones that belong to him, and he knows the ones that doesn't. Jesus knew the churches that belonged to him, and he knew the ones that didn't. He told his disciples when they came back, and they said, uh, they're casting out demons in your name upon the hill. He knew about them. He knew them. 
But he also knew his disciples too. And he told them, he said, uh, leave them alone. He said, you know what faith you're of, leave them alone. Yeah, is he, he, he's in everything that calls him in a church today. But he knows when the truth comes across that pulpit and when it doesn't. He knows those things. And, and he knows those things and he purposely uh, uh, works uh, on them. He knows those things. God's presence means that there is free, unmerited grace. Moses' prayer was such, for within shall it be known here. And, and I've added in parentheses here in the Lord's church. It doesn't say that in the scriptures. But I added in the parentheses, Moses' prayer was such, for wherein shall it be known here, and I added in the Lord's church, that I and the Lord's people have found grace in thy sight. Here, right here. Right here, you can find grace in the Lord's sight. Right here. If you know he's here and you know he's with you and you know he's leading you, you can find grace. You're going to say, well, I don't need it right now. You're going to. You're going to need it. Just as sure as you're sitting there and I'm standing here, you're going to need it. You sure are. That, that death view dew is going to come on your brow. That death rattle is going to come in your throat. And you're going to need the grace of God. You're going to need the grace of God or you're going to leave this world in a terrible shape. You're going to need the grace of God. And, I, and, I, and he, he doesn't always give the grace because some people die that never did see sight in his eyes. Never did. And so he, he he's going to He's going to take them anyway. It is all right in the eyes of many that it is not necessary to be in the company of God and his grace. But a, uh, but a later day is coming when each of you will need it and it may not be found. Listen, I have a message for each of you today. His presence means there is abounding grace. His pre I'm, I'm telling you folks, it is. His presence means it's abounding grace. And I'll never, I'll never forget old, that old brother from Georgetown, Kentucky that used to come and go visiting with me. He drove from, from Georgetown to Santiana to go visiting with me on, on Tuesday nights. Sometimes he'd come on Thursday nights. And me and him would go visiting. And the guy stuck a gun to his head and said, what if I pull this trigger? Old brother, he said, well, I'll be in heaven before I hit the ground. What about you? And uh, and you know when you when you when you have grace, hey, that old brother wasn't afraid of that gun. That gun didn't scare him one bit. Didn't scare him one bit. That guy could have pulled that trigger, and he was still all right. He told him. He said, "I'll be in heaven before I hit the ground." What about you? What about you? God knows. <clears throat> God knows. <clears throat> he says, "My present." Shall go with thee, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Why don't some of us realize there is rest in every inch of walk we walk for the Lord? In every inch of walk we walk for the Lord. There's been a many of a time, folks, that I didn't think I was going to get down out of this pulpit. My legs were hurting so bad, my back was hurting so bad, but there's grace in every step you take. When God takes care of you and watches over you. There's, there's grace in every step you take. Every one of them. There's grace in them. <clears throat> just, as the, uh, just as the presence of the son is light. Just as the presence of a mother with a sick child is rest. The Lord says, come unto me and I will give thee rest. Come to me and I will give thee rest. It was... Isaiah, who brought a message from God, and he said, And this shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from thy hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Isaiah 14, 3. He said, A day's coming when we're going to know it, we're going to see it, and you're going to need it. Oh, you young now. I'm spunky. I'm young. I've got to go. I've got to do this. I don't need to be in church. I've got to take off. I've got to go. But the day is coming. 
day is coming when you're going to need it. I tell you, the older I get, the more I latch on to the grace of God. The more I understand what God's grace is. I drink coffee with men that are scared to death of death. I feel sorry for them. I really do. I feel sorry for them. You know, they're in, they're in their 80s. And I always tell them, I always tell them, I tell them my dad died at 83, my mother died at 83, my sister died at 83. That really, that really perks them up. When they find that out, they say, what are you going to do when you get 83? I said, I'm never going to get 83. I'm going to go straight to 84. But uh, that's, uh, that's, that's God's grace. God's grace is what gives you assurance. It's God's grace. It's God's grace that you need for every day. Why did you come today? Why are you here today? Why'd you come today? You didn't come to hear me preach. I know you didn't. You didn't come to hear me preach. If you came to hear me preach, you're going to have a big disappointment. You didn't come, you didn't come to see Neil, because once you see him, it's a big disappointment. <laughs> you didn't come see him. You didn't come see Reggie. Who wants to see a bald headed man? No, why'd you come today? Why are you here? Why, why did some miss today? Why did some decide they weren't going to come to church today? Well, they thought it was all right. They thought it was okay for them to miss. See, those are good questions. What are you searching for? Well, what are you searching for? What are you searching for today? You came here. What are you searching for? Emma just told me a while ago that she had to take some time to study. Got a geology test. I told her I didn't worry about geology because I knew the geology professor when I went to school. He was a friend of mine. But let me tell you, why are you here? What'd you come for? If it is the presence of God, he's here. If you came because of the presence of God, he is here. Why? Because he's omnipresent. He's here. All right, let's form a circle. Let's pray. I'm going to let you go.